The Atari 7800 was released in the US in 1986 and came to Europe in 1987. It has some fantastic games and some real stinkers. The modern styling looks sharp even today. But it was plagued with uncomfortable controllers like a joyless joystick and a control pad that gave you cramp. So we're going to build a simple adapter for the Mega Drive pad. And we're going to do it right now. Mark Fixes Stuff. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services. Or browse a library of talented makers designs. Add them to your cart and have them delivered directly to your door. The Pro Controller comes from an era when looks were more important than function. While the control pad is an uncomfortable and clunky angular mess. Regular viewers will know that I rather like the Mega Drive or Genesis controller. But although the plug will fit, the pad is electrically incompatible. Enter the Atari 7800 Mega Adapter by Tor Eric Bakalunda. A simple adapter that will transform the 7800 gaming experience. Let's make some space. Shazam! The components required are simple. A female DB9 connector to plug into the console. A male DB9 connector to plug into the controller the board itself. Link below. Two quarter watt 620 ohm resistors. Two quarter watt one kilo ohm resistors. And two 2N3906 transistors. As you can see this is a simple build, but I've got Terry and Dave the gummy bears here to help me. The hardest part is installing this 7800 port on a slight angle. More on that later. The designer of the board says we need to remove the metal shielding from the female port to fit the 7800, but as fits fine as it is. Ahem. Terry, I have a super secret mission for you. Come here. Where did Terry go? I'll show you, Dave. Right, now I'm all gummied up, let's crack on. As usual, we'll start with the lowest profile parts first, which are the resistors, then the two 3906 transistors, and then the 9 pin ports. As I've been handling this board with my gummy fingers, we'll give it a wash down with some isopropyl alcohol. If you enjoy my videos, perhaps you'd like to consider becoming a patron of Mark Fixes Stuff. Visit patreon.com forward slash Mark Fixes Stuff. Let's pop on the soldering iron. 375 degrees C is far too hot. Let's drop that down to 330 degrees C. Let's fit the 1K resistors first. I like to pre-bend resistors before I put them into the board for a nicer finish. Not perfect, but better than wrestling them in and ended up with them lopsided. And of course bending the leads to stop the component falling back out. There's something almost zen about building electronics and I love the feeling of popping the components into place. 
that's the 1K resistors in place. Let's pop in the 620 ohm parts now and then we'll start to solder. Getting the paper tape off is a bit of a bind sometimes. These components are just generic parts, nothing complex or expensive. I might have bent this one a bit too tight to the component body. Yeah, I did. But some wiggling and it goes in okay. You can actually buy or 3D print a bending gauge with different component lead spacings, but I don't have one. That one's a bit better. I'll tidy up the legs before soldering. Looks good already. Let's solder these into place. I'm just going to lean the board on the pliers so it's easier to see the soldering. I'm only using rosin core flux today, no extra flux. I want to show people how easy it is. I shouldn't have soldered these leads so flat to the board. Now I'll have to have a second go at them. But it's turned out fine. Next, let's do the 2N3906 transistors. You can't just put these straight into the board either. I just gently spread their legs, leaving the middle leg untouched. Then with a small amount of pushing, the legs should slide into the holes. Note that the shape of the transistor and the markings on the board are matching. I like to push down on the component until it's firmly in place. And the second transistor is the same process. Make sure their height matches. They should be held in place by the tension on the legs. Quickly soldering and trimming off the excess leads. Looking good so far. Next to install the port for the Mega Drive controller. Make sure you put the right one on the Mega Drive position on the board. Double check it's the one that accepts the controller plug. These ports pop in easily and stay in place. Let's get to soldering. Heat the pin and the board at the same time so that the solder flows into the joint. The pins are easy, but we also have to do the lugs. I heat the lug and the board and give each side a decent amount of solder. Now for the trickiest part. Because the 7800 console's port isn't straight, we need to solder this port at an angle. To do this consistently, I simply rest the board on the lugs. If the pins are level with the top of the board hole, then the port will automatically tilt to the right position. With the port tilted, I'm going to tack some solder onto the angled lugs to keep the port in the right position while soldering the pins. That has held the port at the right angle well. Now we can solder the pins. Because you can't touch the pin, the solder won't flow, so you need to put a blob of fresh solder into the hole. This will contact with the pin and the board. Once the pin and the board are heated, you'll see the solder flow into the hole by itself. 
Repeat this process on all the inset pins until you have a domed appearance on the top of the board. The rear pins are much easier because you can contact the pins and the board at the same time. And there we have it. Our little project is completed and I think it looks pretty good. The angle port is soldered rigidly and at the proper angle to fit the 7800s port. OK, let's give it a go. Let's pop the Mega Drive controller into the adapter first. The port's a bit snug, but nothing too worrying. The adapter fits the console perfectly. First up is one of my favourite games of all time. Galaga. Cart in. Power on. And here we go. The first test is a success with me making it to the 12th wave on my first try. Skating in Winter Olympics is also easier. I actually won for once. Winner! The fire button is mapped to the B and C buttons on the Mega Drive pad and it's very comfortable to use. Nothing, however, can help with me being terrible at pole position. Whoops. Finally, let's have a go of the classic Miss Pac-Man. It's a win. With fake outs and back turns made so much easier with the Mega Drive pad. So, a small build for a big difference. This is so much fun to build and I think that it'll breathe new life into anyone's 7800. I'd like to thank Tor Eirik Bakalunda for his excellent work which you can purchase below. I'd also like to thank our sponsors PCBWay. And finally a massive thanks to my amazing Patreon supporters. You make these videos happen. If you can chuck some change into the hat to help future videos, please visit patreon.com forward slash stuff. Thanks for watching this video. Perhaps you'd like to see some more. Here, I'll slap some on the screen for you. Bye.